a scion of many worlds. Naturally, a newly put up portal gains attention. One with guards on it increases the attention. Him emerging with a still breathing corpse in his arms brings that attention to a laser focus. The air, it, it's clean. There's no brine. The corpse gasps out from a mouth rendered lipless through desiccation. Yes, Jasper says as he tries to understand what he can sense in her. With the woman in his arms, he can feel that direction for lack of a better term. Her tethers are in a knot. Snipping them would be the fastest way to painlessly kill her, but she is still technically alive. If her body was restored, there would be no technically about it. It would be obvious. I wish I could die, she mutters, and Jasper's antenna dips as he reads out where more of the tethers are. He only sort of really done this before. You can. I can sense in the direction of the thing binding you to life. I could sever it. You think I haven't tried? That I haven't found a way to look in that direction? She croaks out. I pass out whenever I try to cut the knot. I'm not you. I can keep cutting after you pass out, he says. You can... You can... You have done something of the like. I died, was reborn, and regained who I once was, Jasper explains, and she seems confused. Now for you, there are two options. Life or death. Death, I've been living in pain for so long. When I said life, I did not mean to dwell as you are now. I mean to heal you, restore you, youth and strength once more, or peaceful death. Both are possible, he assures her. What? Life? How? There are ways. I place you in a peaceful sleep that restores your youth and vitality. While you rest, I hunt the shadow and the broken soul. And by the time you awaken, the world will be a better, brighter place and you will be able to live a full life, Jasper says. Or I can cut the knot in your tethers and allow your soul to pass on peacefully, allowing you to depart at long last to the next great adventure. What's it like? She asks him, reaching up with a shaking, nearly fossilized hand. Beyond only the vaguest of truths, secrets of what comes after stays in the after. There are many afters for many different peoples, and for me, it was not unpleasant, but I wanted to do more, Jasper says. And both the woman in his arms and the growing crowd around him is eerily silent. Hey, you done with the bag of bones yet? We still need to hunt down and stick the pirates on spikes, Magrika calls out. In a few moments, someone who's been suffering this much deserves at least some dignity, Jasper calls back. You... You're hunting the shadow. The withered thing in his arm gasps out. Yes, he answers. He finally places her species. It took a bit, but with the tiny patches of fur here and there, and the two strips of leather on her head revealing themselves to be attached and not a piece of clothing, he can safely say she's a foza. The slight muzzle of her people has been severely reduced by the insane dehydration of the woman. You can restore me? You can kill me? She asks. One or the other, preferably not both. He replies and she reaches up. Then you can kill them. I want them dead. I want them gone. I do it myself if, if. She gasps out as she reaches up to grab his chin fur. She seems to come to a realization. Restore me, remake me. I will kill them. You will keep them dead. If I do this fast, it's going to hurt. A lot, Jasper says, and she tries to pull his head down, but she barely has the strength to hold his chin fur. He accommodates, though. Do I look like I can't take pain? You look like you've had far more than anyone should ever have. He answers honestly. There's a creaking in her joints as she reaches up. If you can make me whole, do it. I want them to suffer as I have suffered. Then brace yourself and hold your memories firm. He commands her and pulls on the local axiom. There are several foza in the crowd and he uses their presence and the woman's own DNA as a blueprint to start pouring in the energy to innervate her. 
The world starts to outright howl around them as he starts drawing in wind and pulling at the light itself to add more energy and substance to the revivification. The moisture in the air is a huge help as he feels veins reinforce and fill. Her heartbeat goes from slow and frail to strong and steady. Ancient fractures and breaks in the bones are washed away and reinforced, organs resuscitated and skin restored. She makes no noise despite the agony of the axiom washing over to restore her nervous system and the sheer distracting madness that is her withered muscles reinflating and expanding. The varicose in her eyes withdraws, and the film over the orbs clears away to show a pair of golden eyes outright shimmering. Her teeth begin to regenerate, and the cracks and chips seal over and heal entirely. Now comes the delicate parts, and the excess energy is bled off as light. To the outside parties, it must look like her twisting body is suddenly bursting with light to reveal itself as healthy and whole. But the process is so very, very different. There's a trick to getting everything to line up all at once. There's a certain alignment to a healthy body, a certain way it all fits together. Sure, he's gotten a lot of strength and nutrients back into it, but it takes a special, delicate touch to really bring it all together. The light fades and in his arms is no longer an animate corpse, but a woman, just as fruitful and looking astonishingly healthy. He gently lets her down and she stands up tall under own power, examining her body as she turns. Her eyes are wide with wonder. Hmm, I had to borrow some details from your fellow Foza. There was some inherent damage within you and it went deep he explains as she starts feeling all over herself. Is that why my fur is darker than ever? Or why I have more markings than before? She asks. Pale fur and missing markings is the signs of a degenerative disease within a foza. There are ways around such things, though. Jasper answers as the voluptuous woman hefts her breast to examine the glowing yellow markings. My mother is the one to thank for such knowledge. Your mother? I did say son of the spider, did I not? He asks her. Could someone fetch this woman some clothing, please? Also a weapon, I doubt health and vitality has quenched your thirst for vengeance. Yes, a scimitar and buckler if you have them, she says. This is happening. This is real. I've had that reaction before. Jasper notes with a grin. Do you have a name? I... It's been so long. The Foza says softly. Perhaps an easier question then, Jasper says without a hint of irony. What do you plan to do to the shadow when you get a chance? Imagine that I've already stopped anything that would let her survive past death and you have one perfect blow. How do you kill her? I scream, she says, and there's a thrum of axiom in her voice, one that makes his bones buzz. I scream so hard that her bones shatter, her organs liquefy and all that remains is a sack of scorched skin and bile. It would be too quick, far too quick, but to give her even half a chance of escaping would be a mistake. Good. So you're more than willing to help me track down and destroy the broken soul? Jasper asks. You can't stop me. I feel so good. If you're not going after them, then I'll do it alone, she proclaims, and he nods. We have an entire team. Eyes in the water, eyes in the sky. We will find them. He assures her, and she nods. Thankfully, the clothing Jasper called for arrives just a few moments later, and she soon has a skirt and what appears to be a corset and blouse. Scimitar and shield follow, and she goes from naked to pirate woman in a hurry. All right, then. Do you want shoes, or are we going after the pirates barefoot? I'll be fine. Let's go, she exclaims. Let us go. You will be acting as our local guide and insider as we hunt. So be prepared to answer many questions, Jasper says. Have you recalled your name yet? I, um, I'm not that person anymore, she states softly and he sighs. He just wants to get to work and be doing something rather than waiting around. Fine, I'll be calling you Banshee then. Banshee? A ghost whose vengeful scream can kill. I think that suits, he says, 
and she pauses and turns back at him with a vicious smile. I like it. Yes, call me Banshee, she says, and he nods. Well then, Banshee, shall we? Jasper asks, and she all but races through the portal. Picking up another? Magrika asks with a smug look on her face. She had relocated to sitting on the top of the portal gate, and her feet were technically on the other side of the continent. Not deliberately. I'm looking for clues, backup, and answers. Having her alive, well and happy to give them all just makes it easier. Un hum, sure. And the fact that she's back in her prime breeding age says, what, Magrika asks, and he gives her an odd look. Are you getting jealous, he asks, and she huffs before leaping off the top of the gate to land on his shoulder. Just wondering. I've spent some time talking on that radio, you know, talking to the women on the ships coming. They told me things. Oh, Jasper asks. They did. I'm the first, she says, and he pauses. She wants to do things formally? That's unexpected. Oh, so you do believe? It feels like most people are just humoring me to get what they want. Jasper notes as they step onto the island. If you're right, great. If not, then we get something out of it. Win-win, big man. But do you believe? Jasper asks, and Magrika goes silent. I believe that you believe. Now, if that just means you're crazy, or if you're actually part of an army that comes from beyond is the sticking point. I believe. I examined the crater where your coffin landed and even stood guard a few times. You are not of this world, Lady Elur says. She had been waiting on the other side of the portal. I believe as well. I have seen ancient artifacts. The weapons you have taught us to craft are very different, more alchemical than mystical. Lady Clarity adds in. Not to mention memories are hard to make up like that, Ariel says. Yeah, we're convinced, Jane adds. I don't care either way. This stuff is neat and you've clearly got enough brains to do as well, if not better than most with a crown or robe of office, Terry adds. From starving on the roadside to hunting infamous pirates. Even if you were crazy, I'd follow, Millie says and Erica nods. No kidding, not to mention we can go home. Sure, the family house is more a shack, but I can go home, Aqua adds. We're in, crazy or not, Lena says with a smirk. Good. Now then, Banshee, please remove the effects on this island. They're going to be pointless in a hurry, and it's distracting as all hell to have gaps in my perception, Jasper says, and Banshee nods before tilting her head back and giving a long, low cry in a note that approached base. The island outside Jasper's perception seems to flicker and shift, and it all crashes into view suddenly. He nearly jumps at how swift the transition is. Nothing. And then, everything. Jasper gives off a low trill as he turns and regards the island. It's far, far larger than he expected large on a truly impressive scale. You hid this entire island, Jasper asks in mild awe. You could build a city here. It wasn't easy, Banshee says. No doubt. A moment, please. He says before his wings snap out from under his cape and he all but rockets upwards. Banshee's scream of what the hell is far more satisfying than it should be. The island is nearly a kilometer across at its widest point, and while not perfectly round, it's close enough to count. There are many hills and cliffs with shallows surrounding the island to prevent overly casual boat travel, but it would still make an astonishingly good port if they could get a good-sized dock up. Above all else, though, the island is beautiful. Banshee may have lived in hiding on this island, but there are many people who would pay for the privilege to spend a summer on it. He turns and regards the mainland just on the horizon. It's a perfect location for a port. It makes him wonder why one hadn't already been built. He chalks it up to the likely culprit of politics and descends. How did you do that? Neither fluttering insect nor earthani fly like that, Banshee demands. I'm very skilled with Axiom. Now, Banshee, I know the memories are unpleasant, but I need to know everything you do about the broken soul and the wretched shadow that dwells upon it. The more we know, the easier we can destroy them both. 